Okay, I'm going to change the jello from this into this by simply using this. Awesome day in the Scottish Highlands. It's autumn. The colours are beautiful. We've got an awesome day. Wind coming up over the ridge, so it'd be a good time to check out a budget price sort of GPS drone. And this is what I'm going to give it a go. This is the uh, Isheen EG16 Wing God. I don't know what a wing god is, but it'd be interesting to see. This one has GPS for locking it in position if you're out and about, and it also has an optical flow system, so we can actually use it indoors with no GPS signal as well. Last week, I think it was, I tested uh, a Vizio that was uh, brushless motors, and this one's actually brushed motors, so this is a heck of a lot cheaper. Uh, it might be worth just comparing up the two uh, reviews. I'll put a link uh, down in the description so you can go and have a look at that. There is arguments. I've had lots of people post things saying, oh, you know, brushed motors wear out all the time. You just constantly replace them. They're a waste of time. And they are not. They've been going for ages. Uh, I've got loads of drones uh, with brushed motors. I've actually still got my original drones from four years ago. Uh, yes, they don't get flown that much now, but when I do fly them, they're absolutely fine. If a brushed motor goes, it's usually plug and play, cheapest chips to replace, uh, and you're off flying again. The other thing with a brush motor is uh, if you catch a prop, it'll invariably just stop it and it will drop out of the sky. You do that with a brushless motor, it will just keep ripping into whatever. On brush motors, you can use, invariably put your finger in. I've done it on other reviews. I might give it a quick go on this one. Uh, just literally put your finger in and it will stop. If you do that with a brushless motor, it will just keep going, basically. Um, it has no way of sort of telling. Uh, also, with a brushless motor, you've got to replace ESCs, etc. Um, they're stronger and better in lots of ways, but actually, if you're budget price and you're looking for a, a new drone that you're not, not flown before, I think I'd go for the safety option with brushed. But I, I know that'll throw loads of um, people lobbing things at the, uh, the channel. That, that's fine. Yeah, it's just my personal opinion. That's all the channel is, my personal opinion. Anyway, on to the actual drone itself. Comes with one, two or three batteries. Uh, I always go for the three. Obviously, um, you get more flight time. You can charge up overnight, no bother at all. The uh, batteries are uh, 1800 milliamp power. So they charge using a USB cable. You've got micro USB into the actual battery itself. And then you can either have this in a... a storage bank when you're out and about you know a battery pack or whatever or at home into a mains adapter mains adapter is going to charge quicker and i suggest either a one or two amp one you're going to be looking at two to three hours for a full charge after you've had a had a good fly around and it's, it's got to the stage that it needs recharging nice thing about lipo batteries is if you only go out and fly for a few minutes you can then just charge it back up again there's no memory or anything with the lipo battery so that's cool and it sits in quite nice and tight in the back here so um, they've done this design on loads of other ones i think they're pretty much all out the same factory the sort of you know the visios the e-sheens and all that uh, all jjrc they all seem very familiar these days they will all uh, certainly go in that way the arms fold in nicely and it folds up really nice and small then so you've got a nice little unit really nice and lightweight as you might have spotted we've got a micro sd card in here so uh, and i've put a 32 gig in there and it seems to work gave it a quick test at home we've got our on off switch here as well which means we can leave the battery in and not worry about the drone uh, coming on we've got a gps system and also an optical flow system uh, which can actually flick on and off as a camera but they're really dire quality it's sort of 720 but the worst 720 you've ever seen this uh, lens actually tilts up and down with the transmitter so you can, we can actually move it i won't wrench the motor around but it, it basically points a little bit up and it virtually all the way down so i would be using this and not this obviously if you're onboard storage the quality is going to be better they give it as 4k but i think um, it's a 2k video and a 4k stills camera but we'll we'll see that and i'll go through all that in the uh, summary at the end of the review the transmitter is exactly the same as the Vizio that I've just been talking about. I think it was the Zen K1. Um, uh, exactly the same, does everything the same. And so are the instructions. They're exactly the same. All they've done is just change the picture as far as I could see. Uh, and the internal graphics are a little bit different. But basically all the information is exactly the same. And it's exactly the same app. So that's why I'm sort of questioning where these things are all coming out from, from the factories. Or they're just 
you know, they've got a reasonable app or whatever and they're just copying it. That's, that's fair enough as well. If you're new to flying, I do suggest you use the prop guards. It comes with four of them and we just simply pop this bit out here. I'm not going to bother doing it with my flying and we pop it in there. If it goes up on your ceiling, it won't damage anything. And also uh, when it bumps into things, it won't actually stop the prop. So um, if you're new to flying, definitely recommend that indoors or outdoors. You get four spare props as well, which is rather nice, so just in case you damage one. And you get the little Phillips screwdriver there and if you're new to drones and everything you can basically strip these things down with a, a Phillips screwdriver. Every screw is going to be a Phillips screwdriver so you can literally take the whole thing apart should you need to. So I'm going to pop the arms out so we're ready to get going. The transmitter, um, like I say, exactly the same as the one I did last week. I will have a quick run through it for you. We can start and stop our video here. We could take stills here. We can alter the camera angle here. We've got two speeds, so low speed is that way, high speed is that way. The default is low speed, so all you have to do is put it up into high speed. It's altitude hold as well as GPS and optical flow, so it will stay in position. And I'll run through the controls when we're actually up and flying. We also got a little LCD screen here, which gives information from the, the battery uh, on the actual drone itself so it's uh, pretty good and it tells you the battery of your transmitter as well. It does take four AAA batteries um, so that's the only thing it doesn't come with everything else it's absolutely ready to to go with. And you may have noticed I got the phone out so you do need a phone for uh, the it's a Wi-Fi FPV and it's a 5G phone you need to do it with uh, they're easy to check out whether or not you've got one that's compatible basically any modern phone I would have thought would be pretty good with it. Okay, with this system you can either turn the drone on first of all or the actual transmitter. It actually doesn't make any difference. So I'm just going to pop the transmitter on and there's those LCD that I was telling you about. So we've got no battery on the actual drone itself. Then we flick this one on, get flashing LEDs. We've got green at the front and red at the back and they're flash like mad. I don't know if the camera will pick it up. And then they go into a slow pulse. Uh, we also get a flashing red LED at the back here, two LEDs as you can see. To bind it we go up and back down and then that's bounders and then I'm really not sure <laughs> with this contrasting lighting whether or not the camera will pick it up but we've now got the uh, battery level on the drone itself on here as well which is really handy and it's starting to pick up uh, GPS signals uh, and they'll count out um, but the nice thing about this one you can actually fly it without it having a GPS lock which is really good we've gone on to a green flash and LED which means we're actually bound up ready to go to calibrate the gyro on it put it on somewhere flat and this is usually after you've had an accident or actually if it's brand new I always suggest you do this pull both the sticks down to the right you get flashing LEDs and then you actually get a beep from it and they flash like mad and then they stop flashing basically the LEDs have now gone solid um, because we've actually got it's actually GPS and we've got 17 uh, satellites it's picked up so it's done really well there we're more or less ready to go and I shall just calibrate the compass on it so what we do there we simply press this one here you get a beep off it and then we hold it up and you can see we've got flashing LEDs now and they were solid a second ago I'm going to try to get this somewhere where you can see it I'm going to rotate it. it doesn't matter right or left you just rotate it flat there we go get a beep and now the I think they're pulsing twice rather than just a single pulse either facing down or facing up and again just rotate it left or right I get another beep off the transmitter and now we've gone solid again so we're actually good to go we're ready to fly one last thing we've got to do if you want to you can fly it without the um, wi-fi on uh, with the fpv there's absolutely if you're brand new to flying i do suggest you do that just have a bit of fun uh, it's good fun flying that's what you want to get into the hobby for but what i'm going to do is connect up the phone I had a quick play with this at home just to see, to, to bind it up, make sure everything worked. Basically go into your Wi-Fi settings and we're coming up with the, uh, we want the 4K on the Wi-Fi. There's two comes up and actually on the Vizio last week I had that, but because it's the 4K version you want the 4K one. Simply go back to your home screen and then we're using FPV Go, which is the same app that I used on the Vizio last week. Uh, we've got all our uh, instructions, uh, but at the moment they're all in Chinese. I'm sure they will develop this as it goes on. Uh, we've got our settings here quite limited on the settings. Stabilisation really mucks up the FPV. You get such a lag on it, it's horrific. Um, uh, so I probably won't use it. I will, might give it a little go, but I certainly showed it on the other video anyway. Um, and we've got English or Chinese. Uh, record on and off. I think that puts a date on the actual video, which I don't want because it sort of mucks up your thing. And then we've got 4K correction. I think that's for the barreling on the lens. I'm not entirely sure. I flicked it on and off on the last review, but I never really spotted a lot of difference, to be honest. 
and then uh, if we go into here this is all the the flights that we've recorded uh, and like I say I was doing them last week as well I'm just playing around with it so we go into start our flight and it gives us us warnings and everything uh, take care make sure you're three meters away the sort of usual stuff now the app's actually uh, quite good um, and we can zoom up on this one as well which is unusual uh, the only thing is it just zooms up pixels so it didn't actually give you a much better shot you could do the same in post if you wanted to uh, we've got an orbit mode and everything and i'll show you all those in a second so to prime the motors pull the two sticks down and out or push them down and in and then we're simply just going to push it up we're away and you can see the angle that's sitting at the breeze is coming up over the top there and it's trying to blow it at an angle so you can see there altitude hold and it's position holding as well really well i'm going to start the video last time i think i started all the video on here this time we're going to do it on here see whether it works fine there we go oh we've got loads of jello that is mr jello itself i think i'm just going to stop that and see whether there's something slightly wrong with the um no the camera all seems fine so hmm Oh well, there we go. So, just going to do that again. Anyway, just looked at it at home. I don't, don't remember getting that amount of jello, but these sort of things tend to be a bit like that. It might be actually just the wind on it as well. So, this is in low rates, like I say. God, that jello is hell. Hello, <laughs> jello, I think, is the term. So, that's in low rates. And that's in high rate, so it's got a fair little bit of go on it. It is into strong wind now, and the altitude hold and everything's working well. I just wonder whether I dropped this when I brought it in the car or something or other. I don't think I've ever seen so much jello on one. Uh, I'm wondering whether I've just dislodged something. I think I lobbed it in the car when I was coming out. Okay, I'm going to do a little bit of a range test now. I'm going into wind, so hopefully I can have enough range to get it back. And how are we doing for range? Distance is 100 metres. I, I don't think you'll be able to pick this up. Oh, 110 metres, 20, 30, 50. Ugh, I don't like flying this far away, to be perfectly honest. The other side of the lock is about um, about 200 metres. We're just coming up to 200 metres. The Wi-Fi is still holding. There we go. Oh, we've got a beep beep there. So, oh, 200 meters range on it. It's obviously just set for that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just actually try the return to home. So I'm not going to press anything on it. Oops, it's rotated round and it's coming home. Hey, that is pretty impressive and a lot quicker. The one last week was oh so slow at doing everything. This one's actually getting a bit of a move on. While it's coming back, I'm actually going to point the camera down. I'll try the other down. That was that was the um, Australian down for in the Highlands of Scotland. <laughs> Read what it says there. There you go. There we go. Hey, that actually comes back at a fair old rate. I've flown loads of these that return to home, and you just sort of think, God, oh, I'm really not that bothered about it. There we go. So, it's 20 meters away now and coming in. Oh, I can't see it because that's. I'm not going to moan about the sun. We didn't have a lot of sun this summer in the Scottish Highlands, so having a bit of sun is lovely. Now, a lot of people on the reviews uh, I've seen and other people sort of go, well, I want it to land on the box where it took off from. Really couldn't give a stuff, to be honest. All I want is it to come back in range so I can see it and then I can take over, then I can fly. So if that doesn't go very close to that box, I'm quite happy. It's going to be about half a metre away, I think. Well, that is not bad. Gordon Bennett, I don't think I could have picked that that close. If, I was, if I'd gone 200 metres that way, I couldn't have picked it from over there. So it's done pretty good, I think. Uh, and to cancel it, you simply press uh, off, uh, press the return to home again. Let me show you headless mode, something that I really don't like, uh, but I'll, I'll show it to you. Some people want to use it. So press this, we get a beep, beep, beep. Now the drone's actually facing that way. We bound it all this way, so I think forward is going to be away from me. Oh, no, it's not. Oh, did I bind it that way? Here we go. Yeah, it's slightly out from where I bound it. There we go. So back towards me. It doesn't matter what way, what orientation the drone is in back is towards me forward is away right and left so it there is no heading on the drone i really don't like it i think it's much nicer to fly properly i would say uh, which i would say without headless mode so forward is always forward for the drone's point of view we've actually got actually the footage looks quite quite reasonable to be honest now now i'm concerned about that jello that we had earlier it's actually quite a smooth sort of up and away on it Yeah, it's still jello like mad. 
So I'm going to bring it down, I'm going to put it over me, and it's got an orbit mode this, which is rather cool. To be honest, I haven't played around with this because it seemed exactly the same as the one I did last week on the Vizio, so I'm hoping the app works exactly the same. So I've simply pressed this one, submit, There we go, and then we just simply press that one, and then we press that one, and it will ascend, it will go off there. Now we can't change this in the settings, but I reckon the app is under development, so I reckon they'll, yeah, they'll get it sorted. So. so it goes away a little bit, and then it should turn back around towards me, which it's just doing now. It really is fast at doing things, it's incredible. And it's basically waiting now for the instructions. So I would just push it to the right, it will start going to the right. Well, let me just tilt that camera down. There we go, a little bit off from where I was position wise. So I think it had blown away um, from where I was. But, eh, it is actually orbiting, okay. So if you want it to go faster, you just give it a little bit more on your control. So we can go left, right if we want. If we want it to go further away, we can make it go further away on the orbit. Actually, I think it's pretty good for what it is. Uh, I do like flying manual orbits. They're really good fun, to be honest. Whoops. I think we're getting low battery. There we go. I did leave this in the car after I'd lobbed it in last night, so it might just not give us the longest flight, but I've got three batteries to play around with, so that's kind of cool. So I'm just going to cancel out of that, so you simply press that one. Uh, we do actually, on this one, the maps work, so I gave it a check at home, and it absolutely, absolutely worked fine. And the other thing we've got, I'm not too sure you'll be able to see it, I can just about see it, is uh, actually the LEDs aren't bad. When you see, think how bright it is here, uh, and we've got flashing LEDs telling us that basically the battery's are running low. And you can see how much wind that is getting buffeted around at. Uh, it's doing quite well. What I do is I turn off the throat mic and you'll hear the wind coming off the uh, head mic. Um, so yeah, you can tell how much that is. Sort of thing. Now this should return home. I'm just going to stop the video actually. Uh, it should return home, so let's just do, go and do a quick selfie, I think. Oh, oh, it's really struggling now. I went to give it, I'm giving it throttle and it really can't, can't really do anything. It just really wants to go in the land, to be honest. Just interested to see what happens. It might not do a return to home because it's so close to home as far as it's concerned. It might just might not work. I've had that on other models, actually. Uh, so it knows you're more or less in control, I think. Well, that's what I would say it thinks. But, uh, you see our battery's really low now. Yeah. Okay, just while I'm trying to run the battery out, I'm actually going to take a couple of stills. So that was a really disastrous. Oh, well, I just had to recover that, actually. It just sort of started to descend very slowly. That battery is so low, I'm going to try and bring it home now, I think. Whoa. Yeah, I think I'm just going to drop that down. I've had that before. If, it, if it's sort of close, it doesn't seem to do a return to home. Uh, if you're flying sort of 40 metres away, then it will come home sort of thing. There we go. As you saw earlier, I think I hand caught it, didn't I? You can, if you can prime the motors, you can hand launch this and also hand catch it as well. And again, nice benefit with the brush, uh, brushless ones. Oops, I don't, they're so low on power, it's not even letting me charge up there. <laughs> OK, so second battery in. I'm just going to go up and away with that. Now, I've found on these sort of models, and I will test this out when I get back home, you don't need to keep calibrating the compass on it. So if you go and fly five miles away, 10 miles away, or whatever, I haven't had any problems with that. I mean, always good to, I suppose. Uh, the reason I don't calibrate every single time is I might be in an area that's not good for calibration, in thick woods or whatever. And this one will actually fly, like I say, give it a quick check at home indoors, and it did actually fly without the GPS working. So I was actually quite impressed with that. That jello is like hell, isn't it? Uh, I'll tell you what I'll do. Let's go back into here and I'll put the settings and I'll put the stabilization on and you'll see what will happen now to the um, to the uh, FPV on it. Or is this one going to work fine? Yeah, this one's going to work fine. So there we go. No, there you go. I just flew off and now it's just catching up with me. <laughs> Brilliant, isn't it? <laughs> that is dire. Yeah. Somebody did say it was the uh, phone. Uh, I think you'll find it actually does it on the drone itself uh, because the uh, I think the footage out of the micro SD card has been done. There we go, look. So let, let me just show you how delayed this is. So I'm literally going to have me in shot here. 
And there we go. Okay. And now you'll see, there we go, it's just about to do it. So I'm going to go past me. And we're still, I'm still on the screen here. I'm still looking at me. <laughs> the drone's over here. <laughs> so you can see how delayed that is. So it's dire for doing anything with FPV, I must admit. It still hasn't even caught up yet. So that's seconds later. Uh, I think it might just move in a minute. And that jello is horrific on it really bad that's even with the stabilization on so yeah there we go and it's just going to go past me now so uh, it's got to be 15 20 seconds before it does it crazy man um, so i'm just going to go back into that turn the stabilization off otherwise it's a complete waste of time having having uh having fpv you might as well forget it you couldn't even line a shot up you have to wait 20 seconds to get the shot sort of thing i will just turn this correction thing off as well i still haven't found out what that is start the flight and off we go right job done okay so we're going to take a couple of stills won't we that's better okay get just stills are just up here there we go stills actually look all right there we go now we uh, also it has uh, follow me well, I'll just bring it down here so we can get a bit more of a follow me. There we go. So it's this one here. Simply press that. And it should follow me. I hate walking. <laughs> this is a beautiful place to walk, but it's a lousy one to do this. It should just follow me. <laughs> yep, here it comes. <laughs> yeah, so that works pretty good. Ooh. So we can still we can still ascend if we want to. To be honest, more mountain biking stuff like that. I would say that was for. Is it going to turn back around towards me? I'm not sure. Anyway, uh, that's follow me. That's good. Now on this one, it does actually work. I've got the um, I can set the the maps and everything, uh, which is really cool. I did get it to do it this at home. There we go. Yeah, so it actually knows where we are. And we can set, there's the lock on, there we can see. And then the other one, if you're familiar with the channel, that's the other lock on that I fly the, um, uh, sorry, I, if I've got boats to do, that's the other lock on that I go to, which is right over that ridge. It's a beautiful place. Yes. So we can go into here and we can program where we want it to fly to. I've never ever seen any sense of these. Again, if you're familiar with the channel, you know that I'm not impressed with this lark. Um, but that, that's what you do. You basically put in where you want it to go and then you simply ask it to go there. Sends data to it. It will ascend to whatever height it's set at, um, which I'll be able to work out. Was it about 20 meters last time? There we go. 17, 16 meters. And then it will go to these points. So basically track along these points, as you can see there. And just zoom that up a wee bit for you and it will go to that point then it goes to another point another point i just find it so boring if i'm out flying i want to fly i don't particularly want to let do nothing and just let it fly around somewhere uh, i've never found an application for this even when i've been flying my big drones and wanting to orbit something or something i, I do it when i'm there i don't don't set it up beforehand yeah and then it's going to turn and it's going to go to position number two you can see on the little one there and also on the footage oh did i start the video there we go um so you can see it's merrily going on its little merry little way it actually does a really good job now last week when i used this app on the visio one this wouldn't work at all so um in the week they might have done something or it might just be that um they've eSheen have actually accessed a different part of the app but i'd be surprised yeah. i would imagine they're just developing it all the time uh, the stop here is not stopping for what it's doing here uh, with running around where I've asked it to go. This stop is an emergency stop. When you press this, it will literally fall out of the sky. So we really don't want to be doing that. So I'm going to cancel out of that. There we go and go back to my screen. You can see all that awful jello. Yeah, terrible. Okay. There we are. Cool. So the FPV is actually not too bad but the actual uh, 
state of the jello is horrific. I mean, lined myself up there for it to come back, no problem at all. And that's in high speed, just so you get a feel of that. Wee! Cool. Yeah, the actual FPV is not bad. It's, yeah, it's. I don't think there's a lot of delay on that, to be perfectly honest. Getting better and better, aren't we? Yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. Let me get that all in shot so you can just see how much, yeah, we're getting there. Headless, uh, the um, altitude hold is strong. Yeah, that's good. I've done a lot worse. I've done some with like a second or two second delay, so that's pretty good. Almost flyable. Uh, I think that's more or less everything done. Um, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, not happy with the jello, obviously. Um, um, yeah, um, jello's a, a killer with most of these things, sort of thing. Um, but uh, everything else seems to work quite well on it. It is a budget thing. We might be able to sort out the jello. I was just wondering if I did, lob, when I lobbed it in the car, whether I dislodged something on it, but it doesn't appear to be. You want to do handhold, uh, just simply hand underneath and just throttle off and then it will stop. Oh, and I'll show you that emergency stop as well, just while we're doing it, so you know how that works. So simply go up there, whoops. Uh, simply press that one and then it's saying, are you sure? And you press submit and that's it, it will just kill it, so. And the thing I was saying about uh, brush motors and brushless motors, with uh, brush motors, I don't recommend you do this, but I'm just going to show you what happens. I can just literally stop it and it will start again. And that's what happens if it hits something, it'll automatically do that. If you did that with a brushless motor, it would just rip your finger to bits. Uh, I'll be perfectly honest, I've never done it with a brushless, but I have seen what happens where they get very close to something that's, yeah, <laughs> could get very messy very quickly, like a finger. So. There we go, so I'll get the footage back at home and I'm gonna go have a play with the um, optical flow system, see if I can sort out that jello on that camera. If not, then that's just the design of it and that's just the way it is. Jello is usually, is produced with vibration. Um, so it's the video's actually wobbling very slightly. It's usually a CMOS chip is actually getting a lot of vibration on it and that gives you that wavy effect. And that is usually down to balance of the props as well. If you can soft mount uh, cameras usually, uh, but invariably it will be the actual uh, props are out of balance or, or something like that that's throwing a judder through the actual whole drone itself. Right, let's get back home and have a play there. Okay, I'm about 20 miles away from the first location that I flew yesterday. Uh, I'm not going to calibrate it or anything on the compass and I'm going to see if Return to Home will come here. If not, it'll start heading 20 miles away. Uh, well, good luck to it. Uh, you may notice a slight alteration here. I've just put a little bit of foam and this is just off a sponge. Um, the dogs have chewed it up and there's tiny little bits of it and I've just wedged it down in there. I'm hoping and it's stopped the wobble on the camera because I think it was the actual camera unit that was wobbling. When it pointed down, we didn't get as, hardly any jello at all. When it actually points level, it was horrific, I thought. Um, and I've shown the footage as it is. I'm not going to do anything on it. Uh, and you, you can see the state of it, whether it's acceptable to you. I'm going to try this out. Um, perhaps two bits would have been better, uh, but uh, I'm nowhere near home at the moment. So we'll just have to give this a go, see how it goes. If it doesn't improve it, then obviously it is what it is. Okay, very very quickly before I do anything else with this, I'm just actually going to prime it before it's actually picked up any satellites. I'm not going to connect up my phone or anything and see whether it will fly. And it does. And it's holding position because it's now using optical flow. As you can see, it's just still holding position really well. The way I can tell it's using optical flow is if I take it up, it will lose. The camera will lose looking down and it will just drift in the wind as it is doing. So you can fly this one without GPS on it, which is really good. I think it's a really good move. It means you can fly indoors and everything, so I will test it out at home when I get home. Uh, but as is, it's it's got no satellites at all. Oh, it's picked up nine now, but it's still holding position really well. So that's really cool. Yeah. And again, as I said yesterday, for landing, uh, you just keep hold of it, drop it down, and then uh, you're fine. Uh, we've actually picked up enough satellites now, so the uh, LEDs have stopped flashing. We've got solid green on the back here, and also uh, here it's saying that it's got enough satellites, so that's that bit sorted. And now we've got a flight with the actual 
GPS on and I think all the jello's gone. Well, it certainly looks like it on my screen anyway. So I'll just turn that round see what I can do. Yeah, much better. I've got no stabilisation on this at all, just literally a little tiny bit of foam. So you don't need to balance the props or anything, though I did mention it yesterday that you could balance props. You really don't need to, I don't think. I, I, I thought about it afterwards. I thought, nah, that's not a prop issue. It's just literally the camera is quite loose in the unit. So all we have to do is wedge it a little bit. Now, let me just pop that back a wee bit and up a bit. And the, the position hold is working well. It's really windy here today. And let's just see whether I can tilt the camera up and down. It won't push my expensive bit of foam out. Yep, it's working fine. Look at that, no jello at all. Well, not that I can see on this, anyway. That is pretty damn good, I must admit. Yay, see? I take, and if you're familiar with the channel, it's the first time I've ever repaired anything without using an elastic band. I am so impressed. Yeah, and obviously the bit of foam hasn't fallen out yet because we haven't got loads of jello happening. So let me just show you our location here. We're up by an old farmhouse and I'm just hoping that a nice orbit here could be pretty cool. So let me just bring it over and we'll get it going. Oh, by the way, we've got the, you can change the camera. So it's the camera that's pointed downwards. Um, I'm trying to remember which one it is. Oh, it's that one there. So you simply press that. Uh, oh, we can't do it when it's recording. Sorry, I'll stop that. And then we simply press this one. And it will now point downwards, I think. There we go. And it's absolutely horrific. It really is bad. So I'm going to go back to the normal camera. There we go. Much better. Okay, let's try an orbit from here. And then I can show you the area. There we go. That's good. I'm going to point the camera down a wee bit. There we go. I'm actually going to push it back further out, I think. There we go. Oh, that jello is so much better. I mean, there's hardly any there at all. Okay, so we should be able to do quite a nice little orbit here. Let's just start the video. I'm just going to pop that round there. There we go. There we go. So you can see, oh, see the old farm here. Yes, it orbits really well. Actually, now I've got rid of the jello. It's a nice little system. Yeah, not expensive. Good GPS. And the fact that you can fly it without GPS on as well. It's really cool. The orbit isn't going to be around the farmhouse because I wasn't quite in position when I did it. So it's just going to be wherever it's wherever it was centred around. But you can change that if you wanted to. But like I say, you can still take it further out if you want to. That wind is really buffed in it. Hmm. There we go. Good stuff. So I'm going to cancel out of that. I think that was virtually everything I wanted to show you. I'm just so dead chuffed that we got decent footage out of it now as well. Okay, what do I think of it? Well, now I've sorted out the Jello, I'm really impressed with it. This, with three batteries and complete with everything, is around 80 quid. I'll put links down in the description. And if I find any codes or anything, if you're familiar with the channel, you know I'll pop them on there for you as well. Save you a few, Bob, if I can. Uh, I think it's absolutely awesome, but it's up to you. Um, it is what it is. It's no DJI Mavic, uh, but it's nowhere near the price. 80 quid, can't go wrong, I don't think. Anyway, certainly new to flying as well. I mean, it flies really nicely. The app worked really well, and they seem to have opened up a load more things on the app as well. So I'm totally, all in all, I'm really impressed with it for what it is. And the fact you can actually fly on optical flow inside, you don't have to uh, get the GPS locked on, uh, which in most buildings is going to be impossible to do anyway. So uh, all in all, well, well impressed. Now, what did I use to get rid of the jello on mine? And bear in mind, my camera is loose. I mean, it is. it just feels really loose. I think it's just come out of the factory just a tad loose. Whether or not you'd send it back for that, I don't know. Uh, but it's actually nice to know how you can sort out jello. So like I said before, it's either 
either with props uh, and it's a wobble that's going through it or in this case the camera was loose as I say really loose all I did was tiny little bit of foam here and you can see how big this little bit of foam is literally that and uh, actually the dogs have chewed this but just a little bit of foam that's all you need something like that just cut it out wedge it in put it through and then it stops that little bit of wobble can you see there's just a little tiny bit going on that you can just feel that it's it's just going to wobble around with any motion uh, so get rid of that wobble it still works on the motors to actually move it up and down and it never took that out and you've seen the footage yourself so all in all pretty impressed with it obviously whether it's for you is up to you as well it's your hard-earned cash and it's your kids inheritance you're spending don't forget hope you've enjoyed this and i look forward to seeing you on the next one Actually, for FPV, you could actually do this. It is not bad at all. I'm just concentrating on the FPV and ignoring the... Uh, and I'm not actually looking up at the drone. And I can usually fly line of sight really well. Um, but yeah, actually, FPV. I reckon I can do it. Oh, there we go. We've got low battery warning again. It's actually going to pop that away from it and see whether it will come home. Oh, we need to check the return to home, don't I? So I'm going to press return to home. It's ascending, and like I say, it's over 20 miles away where I actually did it yesterday. Let's just see how we get on. Going home. Cool. Home is where we started from. <laughs>